The community of believers was of one mind and heart. That's how our first reading from the book of Acts begins. And it's really trying to describe to us the beginnings of the church itself. God created us not to be alone, but for relationships, family relationships. So in establishing the church, Jesus willed to form us into a community. Because it's so much easier to follow God when we're not alone. There's many challenges, many distractions that can, that can draw ourselves and our families away from God, away from what will bring us the greatest happiness. Our world today tends to isolate us from each other, and we can think, well, maybe I'm the only buddy, only person who goes through these kinds of struggles. I must be alone in that. It can be difficult at times to live out the faith and pass it on through our families, to our children. There were challenges like this at Jesus' time. That's why the, 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 those first apostles came together. It's true in our time and at every time. In the mid-19th century, when modern forces were beginning to undermine family life and seriously challenge Catholic values, there were a few ordinary women in France mothers, that they began to meet and talk about the struggles that they were facing. They talked about their problems, about how to raise their children, and they prayed for each other. And having those same concerns and, and from prayer, they found the courage to carry on with their important vocation, to be wives and mothers that God had given them. And out of their heartfelt needs of this group of mothers was born the confraternity of Christian mothers. So started by women just like you, this organization sought and received recognition from their bishop, and then it grew rapidly throughout France, and then into the neighboring countries. Because here was something that could actually help the needs the needs specifically of women like you. Then when the uh, Capuchin Franciscans came to the United States uh, to minister to the German immigrants, then they brought along this popular organization for mothers. So under the patronage of Mary, the mother of sorrows, as Christian mothers, you're encouraged to joyfully undertake the important task, very important task, of training and sanctifying the young souls that are entrusted to you. You are to support one another by prayer and through your deeds, desiring to be really the mainstay of the spiritual life for yourselves, for your families, and a fruitful source of blessing for our greater community, too. And we're going to see that and reflect it in the questions that I want to ask you and hear in a little bit. As a Christian mother, your desire is to consecrate yourselves and your families to Mary, the mother of sorrows, encouraging your family to grow in love of her as our mother. And you'll also express the desire to, with God's help and with each other's help, as Christian mothers, to encourage your husband and your children to live out the faith. Encouraging them through your words, through your prayer, and through making sacrifices on their behalf. Your vocation as a Christian woman, as a Catholic mother, it's beautiful. And it's challenging. Some days very challenging. And it's so needed in our world today. And we need the love of mothers to permeate everything. And of course, Jesus doesn't ask you to do this on your own. So together, as members of 
the confraternity of Christian mothers, may you draw your inspiration from our Mother Mary and your strength from her son. So now I'm going to ask everyone to stand, all the those that are going to be received into the Christian Mothers for the first time this evening, as well as those that have been members for a long time. <laughs> so let us pray together for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Be mindful of your congregation. Lord, hear my prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Look down and beseech you, O Lord, upon your family. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. After Mass, you'll individually, those that are new members, will receive, the, receive these medals. Receive the medal of the Blessed Virgin Mary as a pledge of your service to her and to God. From this day, be mindful that you are a handmaid of Our Lady, the Sorrowful Mother, and that you should ever strive to serve God faithfully by a good and holy life. Dearly beloved mothers in Christ, with joy and gratitude to God, you are assembled for this solemn reception of the confraternity of Christian mothers. Please answer with a sincere and devout heart the following questions. Do you consecrate yourselves and your families from the bottom of your hearts to the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of Sorrows? Will you honor and love her as your mother and instill the same affection into the hearts of your husband and children? Will you be truly Christian wives and mothers and encourage your husband and children to be faithful members of the Catholic Church and followers of Jesus Christ? Will you pray for them and make every sacrifice God may demand of you for the salvation of their souls? I ask all our new members and as well as existing Christian members to repeat with their hearts and lips the following consecration to Mary. Most Holy Virgin,
May the most blessed and immaculate Virgin and sorrowful Mother Mary receive you into the ranks of her handmaids. And I, by the author authorization granted me, do hereby receive and admit and affiliate you to the confraternity of Christian mothers erected in this church, that through the united praise and invocation of the same most holy and sorrowful Mother of God, and through her most pious intercession, you may experience her help throughout life and at the hour of death. Furthermore, I hereby grant you participation in all the graces and spiritual benefits of this confraternity. In the name of the Father.